Today is a very exciting day because we are headed out the door and we are off on another adventure and we are gonna be taking you with us. We are headed to Marrakesh, Morocco to join up in our very first group travel trip ever. On our way, we are going to be stopping in Amsterdam for two days. We are gonna go antique shopping. We are gonna go to a very famous flea market in Amsterdam. And of course, we're gonna have some great food and explore the city. Let the adventure begin. <laughs> We have arrived here in Amsterdam and we are gonna have a day and a half of adventures. First, we're gonna go walk the streets and along the canal. We're gonna go on an evening boat tour of the city. We are gonna have some traditional Dutch food, also some Indonesian food, because we've been told that they have very good authentic Indonesian food here. We are excited for you to join us on this adventure here in Amsterdam before we head off to Marrakesh, Morocco in two days. We stayed at the Florian Hotel, which is very close to the airport, just a few minutes away. And we loved this hotel. The staff was incredibly nice. The design is just beautiful. And I highly recommend getting the breakfast in the morning. It was perfect for us to be able to eat that breakfast and then just get started on our day. We are starting off our morning at one of the oldest and most famous flea markets in Amsterdam, the Waterlaplein. I hope that I am saying that correct. Now, I actually came to this flea market here in Amsterdam all the way back in 2009, but I was traveling with a backpack staying at youth hostels and I had no room to bring treasures home with me. So this time around, we've got a little bit of space in our luggage and we are hoping to find a few vintage souvenirs to take home with us. This market is open every day of the week except except for Sundays. The market starts at 9.30 a.m. and goes until 6 o'clock p.m. I found this beautiful sundress for only 10 euro and it says on the tag that it is a Ted Baker dress, which I know they sell for several hundred dollars online. I'm not positive this is authentic, but the quality feels really good and it has such a fun pattern on it. For 10 euros, I'm not gonna pass this up. This market has a huge selection of secondhand clothing and the pricing is really good. The majority of the clothes are between five and 10 euro. They even have piles with items for only a euro each. I was in leather coat heaven just looking at all of the options. If you love treasure hunting like we do, these types of markets are the best places to get souvenirs to bring home for your friends and family. You might be able to find an actual historical treasure at a market like this versus buying something cheap and plastic that was probably not even made in Amsterdam in a lot of the different shops and the large squares. And these kinds of markets are just fun to go to, to browse even if you're not looking to bring home a lot of treasures. There's no Lucky screws bag. in it. Staple in the back. He said it's from the 1800s. Yeah. It's the oldest thing he has on the table, and he's had it out for three days, and nobody bought it. But we apparently now collect locks on our trips. Well, it's cool because it's got the keys. It's got two keys. He said they both work too. Yeah. 15 euro. He wouldn't come down on the price, but you know what? For 15 euro, I guess we're gonna get it. That's good.
1906. Wow, it's gorgeous. It's brons and porcelain, crackling. These are fantastic. They're very heavy though. The real deal cast, probably bronze, steel, $30 each. No way we're bringing this home in the luggage, huh? <laughs> and there's even a pair. Look at that. This is a tagine. We've been watching videos about Morocco, learning what we're gonna experience there. And this is the tagine that they cook the food in. So the steam, I believe, comes out this hole. Sometimes I think there might be a hole here in the top. Then you put all the food in there and cook a yummy stew. We're very excited to have some tagine in Morocco. I got this entire set of vintage ceremonial wedding spoons. I love pewter and I thought they were really cute how they had the guy and the girl at the top of them. I looked them up online and it looks like they are possibly Dutch or maybe even German. And I got the entire set for only 10 euros and it looks like they do sell online for over $100 a spoon, which is kind of crazy. I think I got a really good deal on these. Jesse and I always have so much fun when we're out treasure hunting. Often we are just looking at items and learning things about them. One way to learn more about vintage and antiques is to always look for stamps and things that you can research and learn more about the item. The other thing that I really advise doing is talking to the vendors. Not every single vendor knows everything about all of the items that they're selling. I find that even if the vendors don't know the actual history of the item, they usually have a really good story to tell about finding some of the items. I love everything about the process of buying and selling vintage items and it's just super fun to get to talk to people in other countries and learn more about their experiences and what it's like to be a vintage seller here in Amsterdam. Look at these chairs. Those are kind of fun. A little wild. They're a little Halloween, but man, I could I could totally have fun styling those up. Adam's <laughs> family. Yeah. You know when they're the only thing, the only accent like that, it works. If you do your whole house, it's not gonna work. That's a great little entry hook. It's amazing. Great little stool. Yeah, good stuff. Oh my goodness, look at this little goat picture. How precious is this? Cheese, pepper, wild garlic, chili, onion. <gasps> they have pesto cheese. I've never had pesto cheese before. <sighs> You like to try also? This is the farmer's. Yeah, they're both pesto. farmer, only this one is pasteurized and that one is made with raw milk. Mm. Thank then you so much. Bye. I want to thank BASE for sponsoring today's video. 
Base was created by actress Shay Mitchell to create sleek and affordable bags, luggage, and accessories that are designed to help you travel effortlessly while still looking fashionable. One of the best features of the luggage is that it has 360 degree gliding wheels. And when I am packing mine full of vintage, it gets very heavy very quickly. So the cushioned handle and the built-in weight indicator are everything to me. And I am not the only one who agrees this is amazing luggage. Base has over 30,000 five-star reviews. So whether you are just headed to the beach for the weekend with some family or friends, or you are headed across the world on an adventure, BASE has your personal items covered. Traveling is such a huge part of my life. It is definitely my greatest passion. There is almost nothing worse, and I have experienced this, than dragging a terrible piece of luggage through the cobblestone streets of Italy with wheels literally breaking off as you go. As soon as we got back from our European adventures this spring, the first thing that we did was invest in base luggage, and it has made all of the rest of our travels this year so much smoother. There are so many different storage areas that I can just tuck treasures in everywhere. It's actually fun when I get home to unpack because I'm pulling jewelry out of that pocket. I'm pulling brass candle holders out of that pocket. I know that that is not what all of these pockets were intended for initially, but I will say that this base luggage is perfect for filling up with treasures all across the globe and bringing them home in one piece. Head to basetravel.com slash left coast to save 15% off your purchase. Thanks again to Base for sponsoring today's video. Video. You think it still opens? This is what I want around my house. I want a moat and a drawbridge. <laughs> that would be amazing. After the market, we stopped at a few vintage stores that YouTube subscribers had suggested. I also did a poll on Instagram and I was super grateful that everyone told me about the store, Antique Centrum. This is a massive antique store that has everything from high-end vendors to sections in the back of the store that have items on sale. They have hundreds of vendors and it is absolutely worth a stop if you are coming to go antique shopping in Amsterdam. Look at this blue cat decanter. It says Empoli, Italy. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. I told Jesse to pick me out Sunnies and he picked out this pair in the front. <laughs> I think those are a little too wild. I like the ones that are made for like riding on a motorbike over there. <laughs> I like going to I was thinking of going full steampunk. <laughs> You're going to go steampunk? Yeah. <gasps> Look at all this jewelry. A lot of these only have like 10 euro on them. Two seconds ago, I said I needed to find a Vitosi for a decent price. And that is a Vitosi for a decent price. Oy vey. some really good West Germany pottery. This tall one back here is only 27 euro. Yeah, really good pricing on a lot of these spaces. Not That's all of them. Oh well, yeah, little doll horse. 35 euro. Then over here, there's this set of vases that I think are just so fantastic. 
for all four of them it's $95, but you can buy them individually as well. I think $95 for all of that is a really good deal. $12.50 for the small ones, $32.50 for the large. I actually like, yeah, are you thinking the one that has a little knob? Yeah. That one's only 15 euro. It's really neat, so that it's by, whoop, can't say that one. <laughs> huh? Mobach. Century windmill, 1st It looks a little bit older, and I just like this one, and Jesse likes this one, so we're going to go for it. We were hoping to find a good souvenir that we could keep in our home that we would always think of our trip to Amsterdam every time we saw it. And the beautiful Batosi picture was the perfect addition to our collection back at home. After a wonderful day at the market and antique shopping throughout the town, we were ready to just walk around and sightsee. I love to make sure that my day is not completely packed full with plans. Sometimes the best moments are the unplanned moments, and we both love to people watch. And let me tell you, Amsterdam is a great place to just get a seat, have a drink, and watch all of the people. Our goal today was to find an Indonesian restaurant so that we could try some traditional Indonesian food. We have a lot of amazing food back home, but we don't have a lot of Indonesian restaurants. So when we found out that Amsterdam was known for having great Indonesian food, we got very excited. We did not know we ordered a feast. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm so glad we didn't eat lunch. <laughs> this is a serendong and this is a pickled cucumber. But um, it's a peanut, sort of peanut. Okay, like a crushed like, peanut? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Enjoy. Thank you so much, we will. This is what we get for blindly ordering. We got ourselves a feast. It was $31 per person for all of this food. But the good news is that we did not eat lunch today. We skipped lunch and we are super hungry. It's gonna be not good. This hungry. I'm not this hungry, you were right, but we are hungry. This is a meal for three. This is a meal for four. Three to four minutes. Our plates are full and we've like hardly made a dent. So I would highly recommend sharing this with three or four people. So this is a set menu and it was just for two people serving size. We're kind of uh, a little bit overwhelmed here. But look at how good this looks. It looks amazing. I haven't even tried it by yet. There is no better way to see a city than from the water. I highly recommend booking a boat tour. They can be a little bit touristy, but in my opinion, it is all about how you view things and the way that you open yourself up to experiences. We had so much fun on our Amsterdam Canal tour and we ended up sitting next to a family from California and we had such a great time chatting with them and getting to hear stories of their travels. One of the most important pieces of advice that I could give to anyone wanting to get out there and 
and explore and see the world and see new cities is to be open to other people. The more that you talk with locals and the more you talk with other travelers, the better your experience is going to be. I promise you. Life is simply just better when you share it with other people. This is the most expensive hotel in Amsterdam, the Waldorf, and it goes all the way down to the very end, all the way to here. And it took them 25 years to purchase all of these buildings, and it cost them $70 million to do it. it the cheapest room in there is $700 a night. Insane. That is the tiniest car I've ever seen. Look how cute it is. Wait, what? That's the house right there? <laughs> That's funny. It's a closet. It's cute. I would live in it. I am half Dutch, but I have not grown up eating a lot of Dutch food, and we couldn't leave Amsterdam without trying some traditional Dutch food. So I told Jesse we had to go to the pantry. I was here a few years ago with some other family members, and I remember the food being so good. I recommend getting menu number two. My favorite thing are the Dutch goat cheese croquettes. They are so warm and delicious and creamy. They are absolutely amazing. It has two mashed potatoes. And then mine has minced meat in the mashed potatoes with the curry sauce. For dessert, the little mini pancakes are served with butter and powdered sugar. I am not a huge sweets person, and these are just the perfect balance of the warm pancake with the salty butter and the powdered sugar on top. Dude, we've always thought that Portland had a ton of bikes. Check this out. This is like a park and ride. All of that over there are bikes. Those are all bikes. Thousands and thousands of bikes. Everywhere. I love it. That's a wrap for Amsterdam. <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next episode. Things do not always go as you have planned. And traveling in these times right now means you are at a lot higher risk of missing a flight. Unfortunately, due to delays in Amsterdam, we ended up missing our connecting flight in Paris to get to Morocco. I'm not gonna lie, I totally cried in the airport. I have never done that. I don't really cry in public. And we ended up running as fast as we could all through the Paris airport to get to our gate. And as we ran up, I kid you not, they were detaching the jetway and the plane just 
taxied off without us. It was the most devastating thing I have ever experienced. It was like all the emotion of traveling and being jet lagged just hit me all at once and I just lost it in the airport. I had to walk away and I went and just cried for like 20 minutes. Just knowing that we were gonna miss the greeting dinner where everybody gets together and meets each other for the first time, I was so scared that we were gonna walk into this trip in Morocco and we were gonna be like this like third wheel, like who are those people? They're not part of the original group. <laughs> But sometimes things are out of your control and there's nothing you can do. So we got checked into our hotel right by the airport. We immediately got in a taxi and we got ourselves on a boat tour and watched sunset over Paris and it was beautiful and magical. And you know what? We sure made the best of it. It was a great night. That is dedication for the shot. So that wraps up our adventures in Amsterdam and an unexpected adventure in Paris. And now we are on our way to Morocco and I will see all of you in that adventure next.